Well, hey friends, it is a beautiful late summer day. It is the day after Labor Day and we just got back from our camping trip. We were camping down in Vernal and we got to see dinosaur bones and dinosaur tracks. Who knew that was all here in Utah? I might be a little biased, but Utah is an absolutely beautiful state. You've got to come camping down here and see all the beautiful places. Anyway, so I have been catching up on laundry and unpacking and the garden is a little bit overflowing right now. So we're gonna do some picking. I've got a long sleeve shirt on, I've got my gloves. We're gonna start with the cucumbers. They are going crazy. Um, the reason why I've got so much protection on is because anytime I dig through cucumber plants, I break out into a horrible rash and get super itchy. So we're gonna start by just picking some cucumbers. These giant ones just get away from you. They'll go to the chickens. This one's a little small yet, so I'll probably let that one grow for another day or two. Another giant one. So this is it for the pickling cucumbers, which are on this side. And then this side right here are the slicing cucumbers. Look at how massive some of these are. The chickens will definitely enjoy those. Some of them are pretty decent size, so I might be able to make some more pickles. I forgot protection for my legs. They're super itchy now. Whew, that's a beautiful one. of accidental cucumbers over here too. They're kind of going out of control here. Sort them out. All right, I have all of the cucumbers <laughs> laid out. There are so many here. So this pile are all smaller ones, nicer ones that I can go ahead and pickle. Some of them are a little bit larger. I can do the spears. These are the medium ones here. I'm gonna decide if I wanna do spears or slices or I don't know if I'm gonna can these up. They are a little bit on the large side, so I may or may not do it. But then these are all of the giant ones that are going to the chickens over the next couple days. These ones are the slicing cucumbers. This one ended up really big here and it'll just be really seedy, so I'll just give it to the chickens. These ones are a little bit on the larger side. I personally like the smaller ones because they're just a little bit tastier and not as many seeds. So I'll probably end up giving these to the chickens. All right, let's go pick some more stuff. I think they're getting tired of cucumbers. Look at the bees out this morning. Can you hear them all buzzing? Mm. 
So these are my jade bean bushes and it looks like they're just now starting to get ripe. So with these ones here, I planted these uh, several, several weeks after my other green beans because I wanted another crop of green beans. Look how beautiful this is. They're really long and skinny and I heard these are great for freezing. So after all my other beans die off and are done producing, if I don't have enough of these to can, I figure I could just freeze them. Got quite a few green beans. I have one purple bean plant and oh, these are so beautiful. So this is probably about four or five quarts that we can go ahead and can today. Nope, not yet. I'm gonna do that here soon. So this row was my purple carrot row and we had some friends over last week to play and her son loves gardening. He's nine years old and he had so much joy in just picking all of the carrots here that were ready. So now that this row is gone, I'm gonna go ahead and plant some lettuce. This is a frost tolerant variety and I can always cover it with one of my low tunnels if I need to, but whenever there's an empty space, you gotta fill it. I still have the irrigation on here, so of course I want to plant something and not have all that irrigation water go to waste. I do already have this growing in various places of the garden, so we'll have a nice successive planting for this lettuce. I'm not going to water it because the ground is already kind of damp from when the irrigation ran last night. But I do have some that I planted just a couple weeks ago that's coming up here and some that's coming up there. So we should have a nice harvest of lettuce all throughout the fall. I've got my protection on again, and we're gonna do tomatoes. If you've ever picked tomatoes, then you know they paint you green and you just get so messy. So my poor tomatoes have been through so much. They've been through a couple of hail storms, several wind storms, and they have all blown over from the last wind storm that we had, and I have not been able to put them upright. Some of them are dying, I don't know why, uh, but we're gonna harvest as many tomatoes as we can. I've only harvested 21 pounds that I've turned into spaghetti sauce, so I'm hoping to get enough to where I can can some salsa because the peppers are going crazy and I need to pick those too. So let's dig through and get these tomatoes. These are my San Marzano tomatoes and I have been super impressed with them. I've made sauce and they're super, um, like meaty without all of like the juice. So that was a pretty disappointing tomato haul. I've got a couple black cherries and the pear tomatoes. These are so good. And then I had a couple of the gold metal tomatoes that were ripe. Those are really good for slicing. And then I picked some that weren't quite ripe. So these will have to ripen on the counter, but I don't know how much that is, but it's not that much. There's a lot more green tomatoes on there, so hopefully maybe in another week or two, we'll have more tomatoes to pick. So I am just laying out the tomatoes that are not quite ripe. I pick them even if they have a little bit of red on them, they'll still ripen just fine in a day or two. And then I'm gonna juice the other ones. I forgot I have some in the fridge that I picked from the other day. So I'm gonna juice all those and see if I have enough to at least make a batch of salsa. And if I don't quite have enough, then I might wait a day or two and juice the rest of these that are not 100% ripe, and then I'll just add them to that. So hopefully, hopefully we've got some to at least do a little bit of salsa. Got blossom end rot on some of my tomatoes here.
So I've got 13 cups in here, which is a little bit more than one batch, so I can just adjust my recipe. I still have some tomatoes ripening over there, but I think that's not gonna really be much to do anything with, so I'm just gonna go with this batch today. All right, let's clean up and go pick some peppers. So these three pepper plants here are supposed to be poblano, but they are not poblano. They're a different kind of pepper. Um, I'll put the name here because I don't remember exactly what one it was. Uh, but they're sweet. They're not spicy. So I might end up putting some of these in the salsa. wonder if the red one's hot. I guess we'll take it in and try it. Not really sure what to do with these peppers. So I've just been leaving them. They're just loaded on here. Kind of disappointed because I really wanted poblanos. I also need about six cups of onions, but my yellow onions are not quite ready yet. So I'm gonna pick some red onions and that'll be really tasty. So once the necks get soft and flop over, then you know they're ready to be picked. I'm guessing each of these is probably a cup or less, so I'll probably pick about five or six of these and uh, hope that I've got enough. It's just about ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Is this not the prettiest harvest basket or what? We've got red onions and orange peppers and green peppers and yellow and red. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get making some salsa. This is the most amazing onion chopper. I like to use a small setting. It comes with different blades and I'll link this down below. I got this from Amazon. It's amazing. So I need a little over six cups of onion. So I might have to go out and pick some more, but we're going to just start chopping and I'm going to show you how easy this is. My eyes are thoroughly burning, but I've got about six cups of onions. I had to go pick some more, but this just chops them so perfectly. I froze three cups of banana peppers and a few Anaheim chilies in there. So I'm just gonna thaw this and put this in there. And then I'll chop up the rest of these. So I think I need about eight cups total of peppers. So we'll just keep chopping until we get there. And then this tool right here is the most amazing tool for seeding peppers. Now always make sure you wear gloves. Uh, banana peppers are not hot, but um, this just takes the seeds out because I don't like seeds in my peppers or salsa and it just cleans them out so well. Isn't this just gorgeous salsa? Now I don't have any cilantro, so I used some oregano instead, and I purposely put less peppers in than what the recipe calls for, because I always like to taste it and see if I need to add some more. I don't like super spicy, but I do like very flavorful. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see what else it needs. Wow, that is amazing. I might add another jalapeno just to give it a little bit of a kick, but that whole combination of peppers it's amazing. So I added three more jalapenos and two Anaheim chilies. And I took all the seeds out and that should be perfect. Kind of sad I don't have cilantro, but it tastes really, really good. So we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer and then we can go ahead and can it.
We're gonna turn this on high and bring it to a boil so we can process it. I do have a little bit more salsa left, so I'm just gonna put it in this jar and stick it in the fridge and we'll just eat it fresh throughout the week. All of these ends and tops I'm going to put in our worm bin to turn into compost for beautiful soil for next year's garden. Well, that about wraps it up for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this food preservation and garden haul. I was hoping to get a little bit more done, like harvest the potatoes and get some weeds pulled, but I just didn't get around to it today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.